My name is Melinda Coletta. This is my husband, Phil Griffin. Together, we're Professor Seth, and we teach you how to play with your food. Uh, so today is the Festa de San Joseph, the, the Feast of St. Joseph. Um, so is he Irish? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> and neither is the Pope. <laughs> um, so today, we're going to be making Zapolis, which is a traditional treat that you have on St. Joseph's Day. Uh, we're going to be starting by making a pate choux, which is a cream puff or an eclair. Um, uh, Cheryl's, if anybody's ever had Cheryl's. And pate choux, though. then we're going to make a pastry cream. So, um, okay. go ahead. All right, so in the pot, we had. What are we making? Pate choux. It's like making a roux. So we have water and flour, so roux would not have water in it. Water and butter. Keep that up. Gonna get all nice and melted. While we do well, waiting for that to warm up, I'm gonna make a little added bonus today. Gonna make some whipped cream put in there also. Right, this is an ISI whipper. I've had it in the refrigerator because it makes it work a little bit better. To this, we're going to add two thirds of a cup of heavy cream. I like cooking booze and heavy cream, so this is the best thing going. <laughs> third of a cup of Bailey's. This is Bailey's Espresso. Mm -hmm. To that, we add two heaping teaspoons of powdered sugar. Shake it all up. Let me charge it. Let me charge it with a nitrous oxide, laughing gas. Give it another quick shake. And if I did everything right, you should have loaded with cream. So if you were just making ordinary whipped cream um, with a, a, a hand mixer or a stand mixer, you would never be able to get that amount of booze into the heavy cream. You would get a little bit of a flavor. But with that, you actually can really taste the alcohol. All right, so now what we have to do is we have the flour to the water and butter. We gotta stir it. Alexa set a timer for one minute. We have to stir it for one minute because if we don't stir for one minute, we're gonna have a pasty dough. Why are you using a wooden spoon? I like using a wooden spoon because it helps break it apart easier. If I used a whip, it would get all stuck. We generally don't recommend wooden spoons for cooking because they harbor a lot of bacteria. Um, but this is bamboo, so it's not, it's better. Right, it's a harder wood. Uh, the bamboos work definitely better than the uh, soft pine ones that my mother used to beat me with. Um, but um, we do sterilize that in our dishwasher under the sterilization cycle. Anytime you're making anything with a flour that's cooking like this, you should definitely cook it for one minute. Any thickening agent, you should be cooked for one minute. You have 15 seconds or less. Almost there. Now this is the tricky part. <clears throat> so you can do this with a mixer, but I'd like to show people how to do it with my hand. Alexa, cancel timer. All right, 
so Melinda's going to add one egg at a time into this mixture. Right. What you have to do is you have to get the egg completely incorporated every single time. The first couple times is easy. The last one is very difficult. Number one, yeah. number two. This is going to get harder and harder as it goes along. It is, this is really stiff. My, my muscles are feeling it. Okay, go ahead. Next. Number one. And what we have to be careful too is we're stirring this around. We don't want to put it in if it's overly hot. If I was stirring it for a minute and I kept on stirring it, we're actually cooling it down. We don't want to cool it down too much because if we cool it down too much, we lose the heat, which helps create steam that makes the leavening for pet tissue. And if I put it in really hot, if I didn't do it one at a time, we'd have scrambled eggs. We don't want scrambled eggs. Ready for the last one? Ready for the last right, one. Now this is when it gets really almost impossible. I mean, I'm making it look easy, but trust me, my muscles are feeling it right now. Oops, one came out. That last one just does not want to get incorporated. Just takes a little bit of work and it does get there. We have a version of this where we add cheese to it to make a savory one. It's looking better now. You're almost right. there. I think you're there, actually. We're there, yep. All right. So that's what your pate choux dough should look like when it is finished. You want to work with this with the blood still warm. You don't want to let it cool off. We're going to put this inside the pastry bag. The way you put it inside a pastry bag is you fold it over, make a C with your hand like this, grab your dough, and then you turn around and put it in, and you scrape it off with your as you grab it, grab it through. Just pull it in, scrape it off. Pull it in, and scrape it off. All right, and I folded it over, so when I go to work with it, I have a nice clean top and I don't have a big mess. Right. We hope, he's usually pretty messy. It's got a little bit of the air in it. I'm gonna squeeze it out. I'm gonna just pop the air out. When you work with the pastry bag, you twist it. You wanna pinch it off with your fingers right here like this, and these fingers right here, you're gonna squeeze and use the muscles right here. I always get yelled at, but it's just like milking a cow, right? You pinch it off and then you squeeze it, All right? Different forms of zapolis. We're gonna make a round one. I like using the star tip because it gives it nice texture. Okay. Melinda said I should make them a lot smaller, so I'm making this one smaller or tighter. Does that look better for you? Oh, a little bit. I, I would see how you're higher here and lesser there because now keep it up. Keep There you go. That's going to be better. Uh, right. Because that, that side's a little thin. You guys may not be able to see that, but I can. Make another one just... A baby play. Zapola? A baby <laughs> Zapola. Or is it Zapola for babies? It's for the child. Oh. <laughs> the child Which, I am? Child I am. Okay, so we're gonna pop this into the um, oven, three, uh, 425 for half I, hour. I get, I, get, I get a 425, it got a little hotter, but um, for about a half hour. What's gonna happen is that's gonna puff up. The steam is gonna make it a little bit hollow and center. All right, so these are what they look like when they're done. Right. So these are ready to go. We're gonna let these cool down. They came out of the oven about maybe, um, probably about 15 minutes ago. So now we're gonna make the pastry cream. Pastry cream. Right. 
The recipe calls for milk. I like heavy cream because it just tastes better. Heavy cream. In here we have flour and cornstarch. Cornstarch is my thickening agent. I have to dilute the cornstarch down with something. I'm going to dilute the cornstarch down with my eggs. Okay. You can always do the cornstarch down with something besides water. Something that has flavor is going to be better to work with. I'm going to heat up my heavy cream. Add a little bit of a bit of vanilla. You like getting vanilla from Mexico? Get good flavor. They throw it over the wall. I measure by the cap, it's just easier. This smells so good. It's got a nice temp already to it. Quick temp on it, so it's at 130. So now I'm going to slowly add in the sugar, cornstarch, and the eggs. Again, we want to add it in slowly because if we add it in all at once, we could have scrambled eggs, and we do not want scrambled eggs. Okay. Bring this to a boil. And then we cook this for one minute also. I don't know if you guys have seen us, but anybody who's taken our class before, they know that this is an induction cooktop. My thumb is on here. It is not getting hot. We are cooking via magnets. Very, very efficient working with an induction cooktop. All right. Came together. Alexa set a timer for one minute. Again, I gotta cook this for one minute. Get all that statchy, pasty stuff out of there. I'm going to lower the heat because I had it way up high. Okay. Um, Linda, I need a knob of butter, please. Get it out. Okay. 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 Again, we only use salted butter. No, time out. We, we put it at the end. All right, we're done. Alexa, well, timer off. All right. All right. Put the knob of butter in. Gives it a nice, rich, shiny taste to it. Shiny taste? Shiny look to it and give it a rich depth flavor. Okay. Oops. And we're not going to put that back in. We're not putting that back in. We're going to put it in a pinch of salt. That's why I eat a teaspoon. Take it, put it into a glass container. Glass container is going to help cool it down faster. If you do not like the crust on top of your custard, you take a little bit of sugar. and sprinkle it over the top, it adds a nice little shine to it and it gives it a glaze so when you mix it together, you, you don't have that crust. And then the refrigerator it goes. Now it's time for assembly. Am I doing this or are you doing this? No, you're doing this. Okay. Right. Take the zapla, lay it flat on the board, take your knife, Cut it in half. Yeah, you gotta sand I know. I never could cut anything evenly. No. So this one right here, already having the pastry, pastry cream in the bag. Put the top on it. Do another round one. So we don't have any of the maraschino cherries. Um, I don't like those anyways. Yeah, I know you don't like <laughs> them. Uh, but my aunt Linda 
in um, Buffalo, New York. Shout out to Auntie Linda. Uh, she made some today with her uh, granddaughter, Amelia. Um, and they used strawberries on the top as opposed to the um, artificially colored maraschino cherries. You like it? Another one? A little bit more in there. All right. And let's do one more with the loaded whipped cream. You're going to cut it or are you going to? I'm going to cut it. So for all you non-Italian people, you can do this with some Baileys. <laughs> How come the whipped cream one got more than the other one? <laughs> it's got booze in it. And <laughs> heavy cream. And heavy cream. Right. Put them on the plate. Make them out. All right, so. And we're going to top it off with a little bit of powdered sugar. Powdered sugar. sugar. There you have it. Beautiful. Zaplas. What's tomorrow's lesson? Tomorrow is going to be gnocchis in a pink vodka sauce. Ricotta gnocchi. Okay. It's going to be a lot easier. This is really good for kids and it's great if they can play with Play Doh. This is Play Doh they can actually eat. After Little they, yeah. they got to wash their hands first, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Happy St. Joseph's Day.